Hey guys, my name is Reb, and today I'll be checking out a Bronze 1 Kiriko. This VOD was submitted by Jenaboo28, and when they posted this VOD, they said, My question is, was I holding my team back or playing like a bronze, or did I just get unlucky being stuck in a lower elo lobby? There were times where I felt like my DPS were standing still, and my other support only had 1.7k heals as a BAP at the end of round 1. I honestly felt like the other team's Junkrat was just standing still, spamming shots, and getting kills, which I know, it's Bronze and he's a Junkrat, but still. Really just looking for any advice and wondering if I'm really rusty enough to be placed in Bronze. Thanks in advance. After I finish reviewing this VOD, you can draw your own conclusions. So let's get started with the review. Okay, first thing that I'm noticing here is that you're not paying too much attention to your surroundings. You're focusing on doing damage, which is good, but not when you're leaving your team critical. You also ended up using Suzu early on the fight because of this, which is a huge resource loss. And don't get me wrong here, I'm not saying you can't be aggressive, it's just that there's a right and a wrong way to do it. For example, if you want to be aggressive here, but still be able to help your team, you could either go left and play around the stairs there, or go right through here and play here. I'd probably go left myself, since I don't want to be fighting that junk rat. After you lose your Ryan and Bap, there's not much you can really do to win a team fight, so let's just move on. Here, I'm noticing that you're either focusing exclusively on damaging or on healing, which isn't necessarily wrong, but I just want to let you know that you can shoot two shurikens in the time it takes for your right click to reload. Here, you made two mistakes. First, you didn't recognize that your Ryan shield was about to break and didn't Suzu him, which likely was the reason he ended up dying to the Hoggle, and second, you teleported away from safety and closer to the Hog for no reason. So here's what I want to do for you. Before you use your TP, ask yourself if using the skill will A, help save you or one of your allies, or B, move you into better positioning. And if using your teleport doesn't do either, you might want to hold on to it for when it'll be more useful in the future. All right, moving on to fight three, I like you use the Kitsune Rush as an initiator of your fight. That's how you would normally do it at most ranks. And you were able to get a kill on the jump too, which is really nice. However, as I mentioned earlier, you're too focused on doing damage here and don't bother looking around at your team. After you kill the junk, you don't end up healing your bap for several seconds even though it's critical, which causes him to die, and later on, you end up using Suzu on your Reinhardt when he was shielding and was in direct danger, which is effectively wasting the cooldown, and as a result, it prevents you from Suzuing the junk tire, which gets you and your Rein both killed. In the final fight of round 1, you need to look at your positioning and cooldown use once again. For example, at the beginning of the fight, you teleport in blindly and also use Suzu blindly. This costs you both of your cooldowns and also means that you're extremely out of position. If you were playing against any decent team, you would have instantly been punished and killed there. But you were lucky enough to not be killed. You were also able to live long enough to get your Suzu back would have mean you would be able to save your tank, but you decided to get kill hungry once more, and uh, you left your Rhine to die on an overtime fight, where your tank's the most important thing to keep alive, which lost you the game, especially since they started ulting at the end there. Alright, let's get started on round 2.
Okay, I like your use of Suzu on the Rhine here. You were able to stop him from being hooked, which saved him from dying. But on the other hand, I'm not so sure about this TP here, since he was very out of position and you were just putting yourself at more risk. But you didn't die, so I guess it's alright. I also like seeing you attack this flanking Mei here, since it would put some pressure off of your tank's back. Unfortunately, your Mora did teleport away, which means your tank wasn't getting healed, but in theory it was a good play. Do note that your movement was quite predictable there, and that's why you ended up dying to the Junkrat. This is just something that improves as you play, but I wanted you to take notice of it. Moving on to fight 2, you started the fight off as a 4v5, and you were in bad positioning without any cooldowns. Fortunately for you, they ended up using a lot of ults this fight, which means that in future fights you're going to be at an ult advantage. I also like your aim here, it's very clean man, keep it up! What? Okay man, that was not the move. Kiriko's ult is mostly used for starting a fight, not for 1v5ing it. And I know you got some confidence from killing that hog with all those headshots, but no matter what, that fight was still unwinnable. Like, you could have communicated with your reaper or your junk and tried to teleport out, or you could have just died and regrouped a bit later, but the last thing you should have ever done there was ulting. Please never do that again. Seriously. Okay, moving on. This fight unfortunately begins as a 4v5 because your Moira decided that she was a tank. I honestly really like the idea that you're going for here. Off angling is really effective, especially as Kiriko since she has multiple get out of jail free cards as well as a really potent headshot damage. But the way you went about off angling could definitely use a lot of work. Uh, aside from just your general movement, your positioning was quite bad. Uh, for example, as Kiriko, you can climb walls, so you could, instead of going straight forward towards the enemies, you could go up here, which allows you to easily drop down behind yourself uh, for safety. Or you could have just played around the stairs right there, which is equally safe, and you're just as effective, if not more effective. Playing so far up actually causes you to Waste your Suzu here, and it also makes you have to reti retreat early. And in the end, their hog actually picks off your Rhine because you use your Suzu there. And instead of falling back like your Mora, you decided to go deeper in, which costs you your Suzu once more. Okay, even though this actually does end up working in your case, I'd like to point out your positioning here. This is something that you can't get away with in any other rank. You aren't playing a flanker, and even though you do have some get out of jail free cards, you still are playing in a very vulnerable position here. You can flank as Kiriko, and she's actually very effective at flanking, but with your positioning, you would normally, in just about any other rank here, be asking to die. And after this, you guys are not able to contest point at the end, and that is game. Oh, by the way, thank you for watching all the way to the end of the video. This is one of my first videos on YouTube and I spent over 4 hours editing it, so I would greatly appreciate it if you could like it and leave a comment and uh, share it with a friend if you think that they might find it helpful too.